Hello and welcome to Coffee with Cow at Learn International. My name is Sheila. I'm the study abroad coordinator at Learn International. Today we have a student who's going to share their story abroad, Madison Sightcheck. Madison, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thanks for being here today. We're really excited to hear your story. Um, for those of you who are unaware, Cow is a lovable mascot who travels everywhere we go. Coffee with Cow podcast is a podcast that aims to share and capture stories from students such as Madison and other international educators in the field. So like I said, Madison is here to share her stories. Madison, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Madison Sychek. So I'm from a little town in Pennsylvania called Dillsburg, which is where I'm at currently. And I'm going to be a second semester senior at Temple University in the upcoming fall semester. And I studied abroad at Dublin City University in the spring semester of this year. Well, Madison is pretty unique because she's our first student guest who has been affected directly with study abroad with COVID-19. You said, Madison, you studied abroad this semester, which is starting January 2020, and you were overseas during all the time that the world was just turned upside down. So, like I said, you just have such a unique perspective on the study abroad now. Can you walk us through what it was like for you to hear corona what was going on and that you found out that your program was canceled and you had to go home yeah so it was a pretty wild ride I'd say um so for a really long time whenever COVID-19 was becoming a really big problem around the world it wasn't affecting Ireland quite as drastically um so myself along with a bunch of my friends who were studying abroad in the same program as me, we were all sort of doubtful that we would get sent home, especially in the beginning. And then it got a lot more serious. Um, the U.S. was being incredibly um, diligent about getting people home. And um, we started to get a lot more worried that our program would be cut short. And then um, it was during our spring break, I was actually on vacation with my family here in Europe, and um, we had gone to France, and we were in London at this mm. point, and I got the email that my university, Temple, was going to stop giving me my international insurance um, within the next few days, and so there's absolutely no way at that point that I could stay because there was the worry that if I were to get the virus that I wouldn't be able to get any help. And um, the president was making sure that people were coming back home if they were U.S. citizens and it just was moving incredibly quickly. Um, it was like one day we were fine and the next day I had to go home. And so it was incredibly disappointing and so I had to quickly change my flight and then it wasn't letting me check into my flight because I had been in France within the past two weeks that I had to leave to go back to the U.S. and it was kind of a disaster. Um, I've never been so worried about not being able to go back home and be safe in my whole life. Like I never thought that I would have that kind of worry to be able to not feel like I had somewhere to be and to stay the night. Um, I had to, um, whenever we went to the airport, I went there incredibly early. They said that the, there were a lot of rumors that the security line was taking hours and mm -hmm. hours to get through so we were all there at two or three in the morning whenever we couldn't even check into our flight until about seven or eight wow. and so yeah exactly we were in line for hours and so thankfully we were first in line but I it took forever for me to check in because since I was in France within the two weeks mm -hmm. that I was trying to go home um, they said that I couldn't get on the flight. And the flight was from Dublin to Philadelphia. Okay. And so 
they were trying really hard to find a flight for me. And the only places that were accepting international flights were places like Chicago, Miami, New York, Boston. Like it was, I felt incredibly anxious that I would have to settle for a flight to Miami and then somehow, some way, like sleep in the airport waiting for my parents to have to drive um, all the way down to Florida to get me. Um, and then I ended up getting a flight to New York. So it was, I was really grateful that I could get on that flight, but it was from Dublin to London to New York. Oh, wow. So, and the layover was only an hour. So it was an incredibly stressful time making sure that I could even get on that plane to go back home. And then whenever I landed in New York, I had to find a way to get to Harrisburg, Mm. um, which is pretty close to my hometown that I'm in. So I was trying really hard. I got the last Amtrak train from New York to Philly to Harrisburg. And so all in the whole time span that I was traveling, I didn't get home until midnight. So for like 24 hours, I was basically traveling, trying to get back home. And it was also the day before St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. So it was just a big bummer above all. (laughs) Yeah, I can imagine. I want to say thanks for sharing your um, story about having to leave Ireland. I'm sorry that that has happened to you. It must have been quite devastating um, to be a part of that and have your study abroad experience be taken early from you, which is sad. Yeah, it it definitely was disappointing. Um, An incredibly stressful time that I, I don't think anybody was really prepared for. Um, You know, you dream about studying abroad and having your like semester long vacation just like a bunch of people you know did before you and I was the first person in my family to get to study abroad too Mm -hmm. and I it was the reason that my family was able to come out of the country like my dad hasn't been out of the country in years and my mom and brother have never really been out of the country. So it was an incredible experience for us all. And so I definitely would say that I'm grateful that I at least had my family there with me um, whenever I found out because at first I was absolutely devastated, but I then quickly had to go into acceptance mode. Like, I couldn't change anything. There's no way that I was going to be able to fight not having insurance and just being able to stay lonesome in a dorm room across the ocean from my family for months on end. And who would even know when I could come back home? Mm -hmm. Like it was the last day that the president was really letting people of who are U.S. citizens back in to the country um, a bit more freely. Mm -hmm. And so it was sort of that feeling of, if I can't get home now, I don't know when I will be able to. So the absolute most important thing was that I could get back home because at least I would be able to be with my family, be in my room, and just be okay. Yeah, it seems like you, well, from what I understand that you have kept a quite a positive attitude w- with going through all this. I mean, it's kind of just what you said. It's something that you have to accept. It's out of your hands, out of your control. The whole world is going through this. You specifically have to be pulled from another country to return home, but it sounds like you're safe and healthy at home right now, which is kind of all you can really hope for at a time like this. So I appreciate your positive mentality, even though it's a sad moment for you personally. Yeah, thank you. I, it's kind of all that you can do because if you can't control what's going on around you, you can at least control somewhat to a degree what's going on in your own mindset and you have the ability to 
change that. And so choosing to be positive and think about all the good in your life. Like I, every day I'm just like, at least I have a place to live. At least I'm healthy. My family is healthy. Like at least I got as much experience as I could over Europe, even though it was about half the time that I was Mm -hmm. originally promised, I at least got to see other countries and, you know, experience a bit more light of what life has to offer. It seems like you enjoyed your time from what I can understand, the amount of time that you had there. Do you see yourself going back to Ireland or to Europe again? Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Like, I have this dream that one day I'll go off and retire to Ireland and just sort of live out my days there next to the cliffs. Like, (laughs) I just, it's, it's an absolute fairy tale over there. Like, a whole different world with what I've grown up around. And it's something that I can really appreciate. I I just met so many amazing people. Mm. And it was just... I couldn't have pictured a better place to be able to live for two months of my life. I love that. I love that. I, uh, I'm curious to hear if you have any advice for those who are going through the same thing. I mean, so many students were taken away from the study abroad experience and also a bunch of uh, programs have been canceled for spring semester and for summer semesters and they're not quite sure if fall will We'll start rolling back into programs. Do you have any advice to those that have that are going to take their study abroad experience has will be taken away from them? Yeah, um, to those who have gotten their programs canceled too, I'm first of all so sorry, but it's really nice to know that there are other people experiencing the same feelings and heartache and. Um, to know that an experience that you were promised would just be taken away from you like that is incredibly unfortunate. And I would just say, I, I think just life's too short. Like, I think that whenever you get the chance, whenever this is over, even if it isn't through studying abroad, it could be any sort of anything that you can really put your mind to just go out and grab it like um the second that you're able to travel again safely Mm -hmm. I say do it whether it's as close as like the next state over Mm -hmm. or as far away as Dublin or France or any any place in the world I think that you really once you put your mind to something you will make it possible And so I just wish everyone the best of luck in their future endeavors because I promise that it is absolutely worth it. No matter how far you go, no matter how long you're away, you're going to get something taken away from it. So it's going to be completely worth it. Yeah, definitely. So from your time um, in Ireland, what would you say was the biggest takeaway that you had when you return home and you think back, wow, I studied abroad in Ireland. This is what I appreciate the most. This is what I learned out of that experience. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I had to get used to was patience. Mm -hmm. Um, A big part about life in the U.S. is that you don't really work to live. You live to work. And it's really not like that over there. It's very much you're going with the flow and you're not being worked to death. And it's an incredibly understanding place. It's just like, it's everything that you would really hope for in a society of just sort of, you're living your absolute best life and you're happy with what you're doing. And I think that a big thing that we have here in the US is it's just always go, go, go. Mm -hmm. There's no stopping. But in Dublin, it's just like, what's the worry? Like, what are you worried about? You know, like, what's the big rush? And so it's really helped me calm down. And just, I've 
always been like that here where I'm just constantly doing something but you just have to like put yourself and your your happiness first there's nothing more worth it than having that sense of self that you feel whenever you're just sort of so connected to the land and to just like having a very healthy like lifestyle and it's just the most amazing thing I don't even know like if I'm completely making sense but no no definitely awesome it's just like yeah yeah absolutely just everything about it like you you'll never feel that same way here I've never felt that sense of self ever and so I just I I can't wait to go back and just be able to feel that sense of calm again do you ever try to recreate that um while you're home yeah I I'm trying to find my balance between work and relaxation again um it it was hard I was slipping back into it at first I was getting back to being more involved with my student organizations at my university and um it was I it's like I very quickly forgot how important it was for me to step back from that um being so immersed in it here and just I it kind of scared me at first Mm. um so I'm hoping that even though I know I can't change the entire entire country's mindset about (laughs) working, I would hope that I can give a lot of people that I work with here a bit more of a sense of ease and just let them know that everything really is going to be okay. And you don't have to be calling your coworkers at 10 o'clock at night to talk about something that you can talk about tomorrow because it's, it's just not worth it to be totally immersed in work. It's not healthy. You need to have a sense of things that make you truly happy and feel a lot more worth than feeling like work gives you worth. Definitely. I can totally relate to that. I'm a huge advocate for a well-balanced life. And that includes, you know, um, social work, exercise, um, eating all that combined to be, you know, a comfortable and happy lifestyle as opposed to having one specific aspect of your life taking over, changing your mindset and your behavior. So I appreciate that. I wish you the best of luck with um, enforcing that into your lifestyle and maybe passing along to others who cross your path. So I'm hoping that more people have that mindset as well. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. Yeah, Madison, we really appreciate um, your time. Learn appreciates your time. I enjoyed this. I'm sure the listeners will enjoy this as well. You can find this episode on our Learn International YouTube channel, and we will publicize this episode on our social media platforms such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn with the hashtag LearnINTL. And look for the next episode after Madison, who will share their uh, study abroad stories, just like Madison did today. And once again, Madison, thanks so much for uh, your time, and we hope you stay safe and healthy. Thank you so much. Bye, Madison. Bye.